Now, <coughs> we've, we've got maybe, if we run a little bit over time, we've got about 10 minutes. Is there anybody here who's got experience of participatory remedy with anything that you'd like to share? What do you think might be useful for other people? Yes, please. A long, long time ago, so I don't know whether I remember all the details. But I was actually doing participatory in the need for women's empowerment in Bangladesh, but I was working with Safe US. And I think we started from, you know, we struggled to define empowerment to start with within the organization and we had definition. And I think one, you know, suddenly we said, okay, let's ask them actually, let's ask the women how they would like to kind of define empowerment. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this was kind of the beginning. So we went to the you know, field or village and then actually asking the question to, you know, to this group of women. And of course there are like a lot of definition, a lot of different criteria which kind of came in. And what we used that actually information uh, to go back to them and also because the definition was at this point and what we wanted to know actually why they're saying that definition because they had to compare with something. So they actually came up it, again within the village that okay, five years before, they had this situation and they think that they are empowered because of this, this. So they identified certain things which actually moved them. And what we actually did in that whole process going back to them in a kind of like quarterly basis because they wanted to kind of monitor the situation. So it's what we did, we kind of facilitated, you know, the whole, you know, bringing the groups or informing those team can actually come. But they actually worked within, you know, the group and they identified the changes. And they were actually telling us, this is what we kind of found. So that was almost like our baseline and they were actually noting down the changes. So all we had to kind of gather the information and we use for our purpose to you know, design program. But ultimately we had to kind of let them actually monitor and also kind of, bring. and there are like a lot of unexpected uh, you know, information that we didn't even think. I mean initially we thought, okay, we will be asking them, can they actually see whether the decision making or buying medicine for the children or sending the kid to the school, but after some time, we drop it because they were actually coming up with some of these indicators and you know, some changes that we didn't anticipate. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that, I mean, that's a very fine, useful contribution for us to, to, uh, to conclude on, I think. <coughs> but the unexpected came up, yeah. that people themselves, you, you convened them, personally, or they convened themselves, you convened them. We, we have to... You, you know, convened yeah. them quarterly. <coughs> and you change the indicators, which is one of the things which I was saying earlier, that if you change the indicators, it, that itself is a good indicator of a participatory process. And unexpected things came up. So it's a, it's a quite different way of going about things from traditional MLE, which is external. <coughs> one of the phrases that Jeremy Holland uses in the Who Counts book, and this is something to take away, I think, and to reflect on, which I think is indicated in, in the example you've given us, is win-win. That's to say everybody wins. It's not us gathering data from them, but it's us facilitating their generating data, which they share with us, but which they also find interesting and useful. So this idea of a win-win, which makes data gathering more ethical, and also, also just, it seems to me, you can make your own judgment, but in a way better, is one of the potentials of participatory statistics. Yes, but very briefly, because we have done this. So do you, do you envision as participatory uh, data collection as well involving other stakeholders so in the sense that, for example, if you are working with local institutions to set up systems for data collection within those institutions and, and the government as well. So really kind of passing yes. the ball onto uh, those stakeholders. Would, would that be considered as a, 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 an avenue for participatory? I mean, Why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, <coughs> innovate, see what's possible, push the boundaries of what's possible. That's what I would suggest being creative. 
Now, the last thing um, is to sit in pairs or in threes. And just to reflect, is there anything from today that you're going to you pick up on that you might want to use? And we won't have any sort of conclusion. When you've finished that discussion, we dissolve and go for lunch. With the seeds having been sorted. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? So just sit in twos or threes and anything you take away from today, anything that you might use. <laughs> So those of you that come from outside our RIME course, um, thank you a lot for coming and we'll be in touch with the links yeah. that Robert will send us. Mm -hmm. And for those of us on the IMA course, uh, also have a great lunch and we're going to reconvene at quarter past two. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so